All right. It sure is. It sure is hidden. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the October UI interest group. Some of us are straggling in from the hack away. Some of us didn't get to go this year. We were very sad to miss you all. Um, I am going to run through uh, some quick updates. Uh, while we were at Hackaway, Ruth and I got the request put into monday.com for our nonprofit status, and we're waiting for them to reply, but I think they went ahead and like provisionally granted it to us, so we should still have all of our features, even though we are out of our trial period. Um, putting the link to our agenda in the notes here, just in case anybody needs it, but you're probably already there because you found the link to the Zoom. Um, all right. So that is done. I have not had time to import all of our old stuff from spreadsheets into monday.com. Um, I got the UI inventory done because I needed to shut down the Airtable account because it was still billing me. Um, I didn't get the screenshots all uploaded, but the, the UI inventory is in there and it looks like it's going to do all of the features that we were we had over at Airtable. So that's awesome. Um, does anybody want to take on the project of updating or uploading the spreadsheets for the reports display fields or the error messages? If not, I will do it, but it's it's going to take me a little bit to get to it. I'm happy to do um, the error messages or- What's yeah. you, Susan? That's Otherwise. awesome. Um, is there a certain, I used Monday years ago. Um, is there a certain like best practice for uploading that information? Like do you want just a file or it um, kind of listed out um, um, so we can add columns to it, I guess? Yeah, I was thinking of using their task uh, mm -hmm. template and that way okay. we can assign owners and like, you know, kind of keep track of things that way. But if it doesn't make sense, let me know. Um, I, I sure will. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can I'll know massage this. Yeah, we can massage this however it suits our, our needs the best. I think we're okay. still feeling our way through how this is going to work. Um, all right. Awesome. Thank you, Susan. That would be amazing. Yeah. Um, and if nobody wants to tackle the reports display fields, I will get with reports IG and see if I can um, grab a victim, a volunteer. That's the word uh, from, from that group. Um, all right. And that's our next step. We will get all those things updated and then maybe the next time we meet, we'll have a better idea of how we're going to use that to start tackling some of these really bad um, error messages and some of the display fields that don't totally make sense. Um, but, hey Scott, there you are. Hello. Um, so before we start rewriting error messages though, we need to work a bit more on our editorial style guide. Um, right after our meeting last month, I dumped it into a Word doc, which should be open for everyone to edit. Um, and we did have a brief discussion on the list about the synonym issue. Uh, what I'm gathering is that it's mostly a solved problem, mostly, mostly a solved problem in 3.11. So if you're still seeing some of that old terminology, it Maybe if you're on an old version, does that sound like it might be the case? Some of us are on quite old versions. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. So I think that 3.11 is a lot better about standardizing um, items and copies. There are definitely still some places where those two get used interchangeably. Um, and I have been schooled on holdings not being a perfect synonym for those things. Um, so uh, that's what I get for trying to fix things when I'm still new to the community. Uh, so I wanted to kind of leave that particular issue alone for a little bit. Um, and we talked quite a bit about buttons and button names. And I keep saying, soon I'm going to tackle the dialogues. We are so behind on several projects. Um, and so it's still coming soon that I'm going to be working on dialogues. Um, but I will get there. Uh, and I'm gonna do a big sweep and do what I can to 
realign all of the buttons and um, it, I won't be able to fix everywhere that has a confusing cancel confirm on an action that's canceling something, but I can at least like make a list of them. Um, so as you go through your day, if you see dialogues that have confusing button names, make a note maybe, uh, dump it in here and we will tackle them in due course. Um, I know, I think there was a recent bug. Did someone file it? The about a confirm versus create in place that view or in acquisitions? That might be it, yeah. Thank you. So I think that's on our list, yeah. Um, what else did we want to kind of do? We, what else do we want to tackle today before we get into the bug list on editorial style? I am drawing a blank because I've been up since 4.45. <laughs> I have a question for wherever it fits in the agenda about some potential new um, bug tags. Sounds good. Let's do it. Um, when submitting all of my recent bugs, um, there doesn't seem to be a good one for links or for menus. Okay. So I was wondering if it would make sense to have a UX links and a UX menu to go with buttons, forms, et cetera. Absolutely. I and like it. Who, who, if if we like those, who do, who do, who does the making them official tags in Launchpad? Uh, I think anyone who is a bug wrangler can do it. I have been doing those, um, and I will continue to do them unless someone beats me to it. Um, but if anyone else here is a bug wrangler and, and feels like throwing those into the pile, I would be delighted. I can do those. I can do them as well. Thank you. That's awesome of you. I appreciate it. Um, I will mention two things that I don't think are necessarily um, style guide things, or at least not this style guide necessarily, but have been on my mind. Um, one is kind of a visual style guide thing, um, but it's occurred to me recently that I've been on many a screen that has previous and next and return to results buttons, but I haven't known they're there because they've faded into the background so much. Um, that they look exactly the same as a bunch of metadata. And if you're not really paying attention and knowing where to look, you might not realize those options are there. Um, so that's part of some sort of like visual vocabulary. I don't know what we call it, style guide thing, um, but could certainly be addressed. And the other is um, keyboard shortcuts um, and where they, like, I think there, are, I know some of them exist. I know some of them because I've memorized them. I've seen some of them in the documentation. I'm not sure how we expect, like, I don't know if I know all of them and I don't know how we expect a user of Evergreen to learn them. I don't that know of anywhere in the interface where you'd say, oh, look, I didn't know I could do that with a keyboard command. I'm so glad I learned. Um, you can get a list of keyboard commands with a keyboard command. It's Control H. Ah, uh, but <laughs> I tried not... question mark and shift question mark. I did, um, but they're I not guess, shift... all there. Yeah. And oh, oh uh, no, but uh, Chrome thinks. Oh, oh shift no, A. no, yeah, Chrome has that mapped to something else. Okay, um, I'm getting the history. <laughs> oh, okay. Alt H. Nope. Nope. Nothing. Going way back, I want to say to the Zool clients, so 212 and before, um, at least for the menu options, they used to have the keyboard shortcut in parentheses as part of the menu. But it's not true now. No, it's, it's not, not true now. <laughs> it is not true now. I do have that built into the new Mark Editors menu, um, which is still in progress. And I will pull out an example of that and exactly how I styled it. And we can add that to the navigation menus. 
Um, I tried a while back adding a menu item that would pull up the help thing, but I got a little tangled up in the component communication. I think I know how to do it better now, but six months ago I had trouble with it. Um, so that's a possibility. Uh, we but just yeah, have to having something to, yeah. to bootstrap that process of how do you learn the keyboard commands before you know the keyboard commands would be fantastic. And yes. ideally there is an intuitive way to bring it up from the keyboard and also some way where you don't even have to think of that because it's actually an interface element that you can interact with without knowing any secrets at all. Yes, I think it should be basically next to the help thing in the um, the far right drop down item of the nav menu that's next to your username. Um, and I know that then separately there's a, a bug open where Blake is interested in creating some inline help. Um, and my initial response to that came down a little hard specifically on the issue of adding a rich text editor for the help files because that is a whole world of user interface pain. Um, but he and I talked about that after our last meeting and then a bit more at Hackaway. And we've like found like a path forward for that where we're going to leave out the editor for now. Um, so I think things are moving in terms of getting more help on the screen. And I like, I definitely think that the keyboard shortcuts need to be a big part of that. Um, I don't know if I will have time this week to go back to the idea of getting them into the nav menu, but I will try. So wait, there's uh, <laughs> keyboard shortcuts? There are. Oh, really? <laughs> really? I had no idea. <laughs> there are. If you're not in Chrome, <laughs> hit Control H. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me check it out. <laughs> it oh. works in Chrome for me, Ben. I wonder if it's a setting. Because oh, I remember no. actually Tiffany, somehow her settings got all messed up. And every time she tried to bold something, her bookmark manager would open. And it was. Yeah, it, it must have to do with where the focus is, because oh. a <clears throat> moment ago I was getting the Chrome history and now I am getting the key assignments. And there's way more here than I knew about. Hmm. I knew some I of these. They're I mean, different there's, page to page. It's one page, but it is still. Oh, so this is context dependent. Yep. Okay, that is think, not obvious. I think no, it's not. That's, I think that's why it might not have been working because it only works on the Angular pages. So if you were on an Angular yes. JS or a Dojo interface, oh. it wouldn't have worked. I yep. was on the home screen before. Yeah. So I think the home screen is technically and, still and a JS. The home screen also in an older version. So yes. <laughs> a lot of things are not Angular for me that might be for other folks. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it only works on the Angular interfaces. Hmm. I made this much prettier in 3.11, um, which was part of my step toward trying to get it into the nav menu. Uh, um, but yes, there are a number of shortcuts that are not well documented. And the Mark Editor has a bunch that only appear in the Mark Editor's help thing and not in the big um, keyboard shortcut thing. Uh, hmm. So that's something I'm I'm addressing in the new version. Um, yes, I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> Let's. Uh, if somebody could dump that into the notes, I'm not only frazzled but on a tiny screen. Um, thank you. I'm just delegating everything today because I cannot. Uh, and I can take this back to dig as a, we want to make sure it's documented in the official docs. That would be amazing. Yes. Thank you. I am no sad problem. that I never get to come to visit you all in dig because I have a, a standing meeting at this time and like we bump it for you. I group, but I don't really get to move it for anything else. Thank you, Gary. You are awesome. Um, we also, I know that there is a terminology tag floating around and we do have one for, I think it's UX dash style guide and we could pick one or we could use both. What do y'all think? 
I've been using mm. it as style guide is a bigger thing and terminology okay. is specifically the terms aren't correct or don't match but okay that's just how I've been interpreting that <laughs> I'm okay with that I don't remember if terminology is a canonized uh tag or not I think it is oh good okay fantastic I will add that to our UI group wiki page of um, specific tags. Um, speaking of larger issues, I'm going to drop a link to what I just discovered the other day. The New York Public Library has a, des a design system um, that they've been working on. And I discovered this while going through the Code for Lib conference proposals, um, the voting ballot, because they proposed a talk on their design system. And apparently they did an article in Code for Lib a while back uh, when they introduced this. Um, so it's not very complete, but it is interesting. Um, and uh, I wanted to show you all um, that it, it, it is there and we can maybe look at that, maybe crib from them a little bit here and there, maybe collaborate with them on some things. Um, I think this is a good start. Um, and I like, I like what they're doing there. And I look forward to the talk. I hope it makes it onto the Code for Lib schedule. They also, in their color reference, um, their color accessibility table, the tool that they used to generate that is listed there in that section, and it's awesome. Um, I think we should do that for our colors when we get a standardized list of colors. But they just kind of dumped their color palette into this tool and it gives you the pairs that are accessible and which ones are not um, for, okay. for background and foreground colors. So, yeah. I have been playing around a little bit with color. Um, let me see this link. So I talk a lot about visual hierarchy and I don't have a lot of really like good examples of what that would look like in Evergreen yet, but I was messing around with Figma the other day. Um, and I just jumped a link into chat of some, um, some trials I did on like a green scheme and like a gray color scheme. And like, what would it look like if we sort of standardized all the different screens that have some sort of record detail that's usually at the top, but if it's a patron, it's on the side, um, followed by like a grid of stuff. Um, and this is kind of what I have in mind. I would really like to standardize things so that we don't have some that are on the side and some that are on the top. I really want them to all be, I think, on the top. I know every, everyone has muscle memory and it's hard to disturb things but then that muscle memory can work in our favor when we go to a screen we're unfamiliar with but it's like yes. oh i know where to find things and if yes. we discover there's a problem with something hopefully we've managed to do some code reuse so that we can fix it in one place instead of 20. wouldn't that be amazing <laughs> intuitive <laughs> Mm -hmm. Groundbreaking. <laughs> I know it's not that simple, but no, but but you're right. Yeah. Um. So uh, I'm gonna nudge things in this direction when we do things like the next version of ACK, um, and thinking about redoing some aspects of the catalog display. Um, we're redoing Cirque in Angular very soon. So I can kind of nudge things there. Um, and I want it to get to where 
first of all, the title of the thing that you are looking at is clear and obvious and not like the same size as 20 other pieces of metadata in that big table, <clears throat> record summaries. Um, and that we use color a little more deliberately to call out the things that are important and a little less haphazardly on the buttons just to make things colorful. <laughs> And does um, title matching come into that as well, where the header of the page and the menu option mm -hmm. are either the same or close? Yes, ideally. <laughs> ideally, um, yes. I'll throw in there, and I know I um, filed a bug about this a while back, but also the URLs um ideally have some link that is recognizable mm -hmm. that'd be amazing um i know there is an outstanding bug on four or five pages that need specific titles uh and if anybody is looking for something to pick up quickly for 312 uh um it is I, this one. That would be an awesome win if someone wants to go name a few pages in a quick patch. Um, I think there's hmm. another one for server admin, or sorry, for, because the notes say server admin there, but that's actually local admin, what's listed in the bug. But yeah. I think another bug for server admin for the same kind of things. Yep, I think so. Um, let me I'm see if pretty I sure I submitted it, <laughs> which is how I know it exists. And I have a giant spreadsheet that I keep that is sort of in sync with uh, the accessibility tag on Launchpad. So let me do a quick search for title, see if it's in here. Yep. We've got one for Cirque. And that one is here. Then that's all I've got. I'm, I don't see the server admin one, but let me track it down. Let's put it in chat. I think it's the right one. Oh, thank you, Susan. Okay, awesome. Ah, yes, menus and document titles. I do have this one. It just, just didn't have the word title in it, so that's why I lost it. Um, yeah, anybody want to take these? That'd be great. I know I'm not going to have time before feature freeze. Um, I am under the gun for some things like finishing ACK <laughs> and link checker. Uh, no, link checker's up. Uh, what's the other one? Um, brain. No go. Reports? No, that's not going to get into 312, unfortunately. Um, although we're still squashing bugs on it from partner testing. Um, uh, oh, you trees, custom OU trees. That's it. Some of those lingering bits of dojo were finally, finally getting rid of. Um. Yeah, unfortunately, my level of expertise ends with pointing out the ones that need to be fixed. Not <laughs> if it doesn't extend if, to the fixing yeah. them currently. <laughs> no problem. If you have suggestions for what exactly the title should be, dump them in the comments and mm. somebody who wrangles code will come along and make that happen. Um, let's see. What mm. else? Okay. <sighs> Is there anything else that we want to try to nail down in terms of terminology 
or standardization that might be helpful as we think about the error messages specifically? I will go through and get some more links on like, I know we have a few on writing good error messages. Sorry, Jingle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jingle. Oh my God, I'm so tired. <laughs> Jennifer. Um, I was just gonna say, I think you've got the bug that I submitted listed, um, but uh, not using IDs in error messages. Yes. Um, Cause we found that in ACK, it uses the org unit ID as opposed to the short code. So okay. none of our library staff know what that means. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one. Oh. And I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just thinking of one that I've run into lately. And again, I'm using an older version of Evergreen, so this may have already been addressed. Um, and I'm not really sure if it's intended behavior, but I certainly have found it confusing, is when you're deleting an item and it's in a status that should not be deleted, um, but you're in an account that um, has permission to delete it anyways, as I often am, the button that seems like you're acknowledging the message is actually the button that says, go ahead and delete it. Um, so I'm thinking, oh, it's good to know that has that status. Dismiss the message. I hit like, okay, or something like that, because I want to dismiss the message. But in fact, what that has meant is, I want to delete it anyways. Um, it's very counterintuitive. Now, that has not yet led me to shoot myself into the foot, uh, but I can totally see it happening. Yes. If you wouldn't mind grabbing a screenshot or something or just jotting it down the next time you run across that. Um, I, I can, it. yes, I will make a note because I can artificially make that happen with something that I want to delete. <laughs> Not sure that we have that one in the bug tracker yet. So that'd be great to, to have in there. Um, this one that has a vendetta against my face today. My house plan um, grew a couple bugs while I was gone. So, but yeah, as a general principle, though, the making it very clear what is dismissing the message and what is taking an action. Yeah. Th those, one should never be surprised to find out that an action has been taken, particularly a destructive action. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I think starting by getting a list of some of the places where that happens is what we need to do. We know that it happens. We we know we've seen it, but I don't think we have a comprehensive or even a beginning um, list of the instances where the confirmed dialogues are really, really confusing in their wording. Hey, Blake. Hey, Stephanie and everybody. Everyone is putting up with my sleeplessness and um, mm -hmm. like disastrous word salad uh, of my sleep deprived brain. Um, let me dump, you've probably seen it, but there's our agenda. Um, we're just kind of shooting around different ideas of like things that we need to document for the editorial style guide at the moment. Um, well, and with that, I would actually say to swing back to record or to IDs for a moment. And okay. I think it would make sense for our editorial style guide that like, if the column or field isn't specifically for an ID, the database ID should never show up in Evergreen because yep. there's a bunch of places where you have like a transit source or an org unit. And instead of usable information, it's the database ID. So unless the column is the database ID. I've seen that before, but I haven't seen it in a while. Is that still going on in 
There's a few places. I think I think it's much better than it used to be. I just had a phone call from a library earlier this week um, and transit source in the view holds in 311 still shows the ID as opposed to the library short code. So they can't tell where these items are actually coming from. Oh. Without many more clicks. <laughs> that reminds me, and I know these interfaces are all being rewritten as we speak. Um, so hopefully these are being addressed as part of that. But I very occasionally, but sometimes do end up in acquisitions. And I generally see a lot of numbers that are distinguished, as far as I can tell, just by strange punctuation that I'm unfamiliar with. And I have no idea what number represents what or what clicking on it will do. Yes. I have been fighting that in AC, and I think I have not won the fight in 312, but I'm I'm going to win it in 313. Uh, here, here. Wherever we end up. Uh, yes, random numbers sometimes tell you how many line items there are. Sometimes it takes you to an ID. They're, it drives me insane that they're not uh, labeled, labeled in any way. Yeah, there's there's no labels. It's no. better in ang in the angularized interfaces than it was in the dojo. I wouldn't say like yeah, it's not perfect, but I think it's better. It is better. At least they are the locations are standardized. So once you learn, oh, the second number in the last row is the ID, then you know you kind of got it. But yeah, you have to memorize what number goes where, and it's maddening. And there are folks that only look at those screens occasionally. Exactly. <laughs> this is... They just like have to click on things and see what happens and hope for the best. This is something I keep hammering during development talks. I'm like, we we think a lot about like the ACK interest group and how they do things. But that's a tiny, tiny portion of the users who actually do interact with the ACK interfaces. And those are the power users. That's not the everyday user. Um, so yeah, I agree. All of the places where it shows an ID when it clearly should be uh, the word, because the column says it's like the short name or whatever, and it's only the ID. Are all of those meticulously cataloged in a launch pad somewhere? Or... <laughs> no, okay. No. That's okay. one of the things we're working on, yeah. Okay. Well, just documenting where this happens. Would it make sense for something like that to have a particular tag? Because I think the one that I submitted for transit source ages back is tagged for like holds and stuff, but there wasn't really a tag to like be like, you know what I mean? Yeah, if it's showing up in the error messages, let's use the UX error messages yeah. tag. Well, this is just showing in the column, though, for the mm -hmm. transit source one. I don't think we have a good tag for that. Yeah. I'd be OK with, with repurposing terminology to include that. Ooh, I like that. Because it is the wrong term. Mm -hmm. And we don't have very much in that tag, so I think we'll spot it once it's there. We may need to break that out later, but I think for now we can just use terminology. I've added it to my bug. Fantastic. Um, anything else we want to throw into the pot for style guide consideration this month? We will come back to this. We, we will be revisiting this every single meeting, I think. So look at bugs. <laughs> Ooh, we have a huge long list of new bugs and bugs that got patched because Hackaway was really, really productive. Um, and even then, some of us were like, ah, we weren't as productive as we would have liked to be. But 
I started putting this list together and I was like, damn, that's like that's a lot of stuff. Um, so we have some new bugs up there at the top that don't have patches yet. Um, and I'm, I apologize for the complete lack of standardization in the formatting of these bug links. I copied them from like four different sources 20 minutes after I got off the plane. So they're a mess um, and in need of style guide assistance, but they're all in there. Um, so if anybody wants to tackle these, uh, those are new things. Uh, the top one there, I think it's pretty important. The staff portal, that is a branch off of the larger bug that discussion has been happening on primarily between Eva and Jane and Linda about the Czech translation being completely broken um, and needing some, some fixes so that our Czech friends can upgrade their systems. Um, so Jane's got a couple of branches there. The, the one about the icon has been patched on the other ticket. And then this one is separate and needs a, a patch. Um, so if anybody has time to tackle that, that'd be amazing. Any new ones in there that anybody wants to talk about or have questions about before we get down to the, the next mm. section of the bug list? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Bugs with pull requests. There's some new features here that I wanted to just bring to everyone's attention. I think Taryn is planning to fire up some bug squashing things next week. Is that accurate? Just got an I email think... from her, yeah. Sweet. OK, that's what I thought. Uh, I don't know if Equinox is also going to fire up some bug squashing servers. We usually do. Um, Jason is not feeling well after hack away and is not in today so i won't trouble him by asking but uh we usually have at least a couple things up um it's technically so, feedback fest not it's feedback yeah. fest it's not yeah. bug squatting okay yeah. <laughs> okay thank you i i am i stand corrected um we have some big new features um big ish uh Link checker. Added content is difficult to test unless you have a novelist account <laughs> and are willing to go talk to EBSCO support and say, hey, can I have a separate set of credentials for the staff client so I can test Evergreen's new feature, which they know about because we had to get a set of credentials. Um, but you won't be able to use the same set that you use for the OPAC. They use two different logins. So, um, and then EBSCO has to set up the, the search pattern um, for the staff URLs. Um, so it's not hard. It's just, you do have to contact them and then wait to hear back before you can even get started. Um, and we don't have a test server up for this because Novelist gave us basically like an unlimited test account um, and we can't share that. <laughs> so um Testing that is not the easiest thing in the world. Fortunately, uh, Noble tested it pretty thoroughly uh, for us um, as our funding partner on that one. Um, so we feel fairly confident that it works, but we really would love to have someone else give it a shot. Uh, just to make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, I put in a last minute fix for this staff catalog facet thing. And I'm right now like over in another window trying to simplify it because I think I like over-engineered it massively. Um, but that was a staff catalog blocker that's been there for a couple of years and I banged on it a bit a hack away and got it to work. So um, if it ends up on a test server that I can access, I can commit to testing that one. Awesome. Because I it yeah it was one of our libraries that reported it and okay they've been checking in since three seven <laughs> i saw like a hundred and some odd people listed on that bug i was like okay i'm about to update it and a whole bunch of people are gonna get an email great <laughs> um, um, but yeah so i i can definitely commit to testing that one the fix awesome all right i will try to clean it up and get a nicer version out uh by monday 
Um, we have a bunch of other ones here. Uh, there's like three new bugs related to surveys and two of them I got patched at Hackaway because Ruth was sitting next to me and she was like, this survey is ugly. <laughs> and I said, yes, yes it is. And we sat there and we fixed it. So with surveys, um, does, do we consider the org unit filter to be part of like the style? Because that's the big issue for us is the surveys doesn't have a filter at all. So our libraries can't use it because they can see everything. Wow. Mm -hmm. Huh. Um, that um, is, and like, I guess whether a page should have a filter might be part of the style guide. I just put the yeah. bug into the chat. Oh, wow. Wow. Because I was looking and watching all these survey fixes and I was like, yay, but we still well, can't use it. Well, and, and that's because I was literally looking at the thing that Ruth was pointing at in the chair next to me. And that's how that got fixed. Um, but uh, this is a bad one. Yeah, we need to fix this. Wow. OK. I have it's never given the survey feature any thought, but I can also say that CW Mars, this giant consortium with each library extremely independent, and there's no way we would use a feature like that at any of our libraries, I think, unless we could have it limited to our own unit. For sure. And I know that um, BC Co op is very concerned about security of their. And, and like siloing their patron groups mm -hmm. um, among their different libraries and they will be um, very sad uh, if we don't have this. So is there a best UX tag to add to this kind of? That one is, do we have a privacy tag? And is that already on there? Uh, it not. is not on there, but there is a privacy, like just a general privacy tag. Yeah, let's use that. Okay. I don't, that it doesn't right. sound like a UX issue to me. Like this is it's... just a missing feature that we badly need. Yep. Yeah, I would call that a privacy issue more than even a UX issue. But I do think it kind of tilts back into UX in that like, when you're designing the interface, whether or not a org unit filter is needed is part of that consideration. For sure. Well, thank you I mean, for letting you, me you bring attention to this one. You only need an org <laughs> unit filter if the data is associated with org units, which I'm guessing it probably isn't if there's no filter, though I know nothing about what's going on inside. I'm pretty sure every survey has a, like an owning org unit. So, Fascinating. So it's there, it's just, you don't have a way to filter it out currently. I'm dropping in another bug too, because we found that we can't add questions to surveys anymore. So we can't oh. create them anymore. I saw, you filed that one, right? I saw, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. Um, I, was like, oh, okay. I think Taryn said there may be something that Michelle Morgan found with permissions, like something if it was if it was in the field mapper, it wasn't in the seed data or something like that. Um, she said it may affect that, but I don't know. So I know that was like a hack away conversation. But yeah, we haven't been able to create surveys for, I guess, two years <laughs> or so. That explains why it didn't work when I tested it in 311. Yeah, <laughs> it almost looks like it works and then it doesn't. <laughs> Thank you for filing bugs on all these, y'all. It hurts my heart when I when I hear that these features don't work. But we will we will get them fixed. Um, so sorry to divert us off on a bit of a tangent there. Not at all. It's a good tangent. Um, <laughs> yeah. I did a brief accessibility talk to the developers um, at Hackaway, and it was just a real short version of the big workshop that I gave at the conference last year, but we talked about the links versus buttons issue quite a bit, um, and uh, everybody seems on board with 
kind of getting that straightened out. So um, there's a couple more in here. Um, Gary found one almost immediately after I finished talking uh, in the OPAC. And so that's in our list. He patched it immediately, which is awesome. Go Gary. That was great. Uh, so all of these I'm hoping will be up on test servers for Feedback Fest. Um, then we've got a bunch of stuff that got committed. Um, so I'd wanted to call those out just for you know people at Hackaway being awesome, but also mm -hmm. for things to keep an eye out when you upgrade. <laughs> if any of these cause quibbles in the interface, shall we say? I know we're still I, seeing a lot of ripples from Bootstrap 5. And I think a big call out to you, Stephanie, because a bunch of these fixes came from you before Hackaway. They did. Which meant and that I, we did our upgrade on Sunday with them. Mm -hmm. So a Fantastic. big call out to you for that. Thank you. You are welcome. And I want to call out Stephen and Scott for picking up some of these new ones. Um, and of course, Jane is always on top of our UI things. Um, so a lot of these came um, from them as well. Uh, I think, I feel like we finally have some momentum behind UI changes. So go us. It's getting better. Thank you, Gary, for finding that bug in the reporter for scheduling it at 8 a.m. I had just thought my reports that I run every Friday just took an hour to run and I never questioned I was, it. So. I mean, that had to be there for 20 <laughs> years and I'm the first one that found it. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, that completely makes sense. I just thought it was a yeah, complex but, report, which it wasn't. But, um, I've been using so awesome. reports. <laughs> yeah. I've been using SQL. I started using the reporter about three weeks ago and go, why is it not coming out at eight? <laughs> so that's why. So, And what was the reason? The, uh, the select list had a typo in it. Instead of doing eight at eight a.m., it had nine a.m. when you uh, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh! It copy. wasn't written on a loop. It was hard coded. It's like yeah, it was hard coded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny typo. Yeah, that's funny. That probably <laughs> that's probably been there since the interface was made. Yeah, yeah. Which which has been a long time. <laughs> and I was surprised I didn't find a bug. <laughs> so. I love I love bugs like that. They're so funny. I mean, I hate them, but I love them too because they make me laugh. Um, Jane and I found this one about the Angular grid while we were testing something else in her uh, Monday code reviews. And we were like, oh my God, the screen reader didn't even read that entire column. We just patched it like in like 10 minutes. It was great. Um, and then I put all of Josh's mark record um, just keyboard shortcuts in here because they he just like committed a raft of them and they're awesome. Um, so those are all relatively new. Um, and then Taryn added a print thing in here. So sorry, my phone's ringing and it's across the room, so I'm not going to grab it. I have to. Uh, I have to go stuff. to another meeting. Sorry. Thanks, Blake. Sorry. We'll see you later. All right. All right. Anything else anybody wants to talk about in our last few minutes for this month? Um, Just with what you were saying about the session you did for the developers, um, would something like that aimed at testers be a good conference session like here's what to look for when you're testing Ooh, yeah that'd be amazing yeah i mean i'm happy to help with something like that <laughs> I, you and i can collaborate and i can throw in the five minute accessibility test that i showed the developers um yeah. Anybody else want to throw in on that one and we'll put something together as like a panel? You can think about it. The proposal's okay. not due till December. True. Okay. 
think about it. We'll we'll come back yeah. and we'll we'll put together a how to test. Yeah, but I'm just thinking if like during bug squashing and feedback fest, the people testing are more likely to spot some of these UI issues and then report them. We could make a UI checklist and that would actually be really helpful in the development process as well. Yeah. Um, so that we catch them before they get out to feedback fest. <laughs> and I have a mental list, but like it would be good to have it actually written down somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'd love to collaborate on that with you, Stephanie. That'd be awesome. Let's and anyone that. else who's interested. Lena, you look thoughtful. You wanna you wanna be in on this? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Okay. I know. I'm interested, but you know, there's changes and extra work yeah. coming my way. So I I hear you. I hear you. Yep. It's a 2024 project, though. Once the proposals submitted, if that helps. Yeah, the proposal is the only thing due in the, in December. Then we don't actually have to do it until April. So maybe. Okay, we'll we'll come back to that idea. Um. Okay. Uh, one thing we do need to talk about very quickly is when do we want to meet next? Because I think our next meeting is at an awkward time. Uh, if I am looking at my calendar correctly, which I almost Seems never am. very answered. likely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, oh, is that Thanksgiving for you guys? It is Thanksgiving. <laughs> it is mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Do we want to just bump it back a week and do it on the 30th? Uh, is that the 30th? I can't. I literally cannot read my calendar. The next yes. week is the 30th, and yeah. that works fine for me. Okay. Same. Everybody Same. good? We'll just make it week five instead of week four. Convenient of November to have five weeks like that for us. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. And that actually is perfect timing because the proposals will not quite be due yet. And we can talk more about what else we want to see from each other and others in the way of UI things at the conference. Um, so bring your conference ideas next time. And we're about out of time. So thank you, everyone. You're all amazing, as always. And thank you for putting up with my total <laughs> lack of sleep and filter you did great. from brain to mouth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to go lie down. Uh, Have no, a very I'm gonna, I'm good gonna nap. Mike, and then I'm going to lie down. Uh, and um, I will see you all um, next month in Sounds like good. five weeks yeah. after after Thanksgiving. All right. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Stephanie. You. Thanks.